guys and welcome to Hattie Gastro. In today's video, we'll be talking about the colonic polyps. So let's get started. So what are colon polyps? The colon or the large intestine is a long hollow tube that is responsible for making and storing the stool. Colon polyps are also known as colorectal polyps and are growths that appear within the mucosal layer of the colon. Over time, some polyps, which means approximately less than 1%, can turn into colon cancer, but it usually takes many years for this process to unfold. There are a few different types of colon polyps. Let's explore them further. So before we go on to the next slide, I just want to point out a few things here. So we said these colon polyps or colorectal polyps are polyps that occur within the mucosal layer of the colon. So if we look at a cross-section of the layers that make up our colon, from innermost to outermost, we have the mucosa, the submucosa, the muscular layer, and the serosa. So the polyps, when they form, they actually form in the innermost layer, which is the mucosal layer. And this is what the appearance of them actually looks like. So we see, this is a view on colonoscopy, and this is basically an artist's impression of what these colon polyps actually look like. So basically, there are these masses or growths that appear within the mucosal layer of the large intestine. So in the previous slide, we mentioned that there are many different types of colon polyps. So let's talk a little bit more about this. Beyond their physical appearance, we have to determine what type of polyp the growth is. This process typically requires examining a tissue sample of the polyp under a microscope to look at both the cellular structure and the characteristics of the cells themselves. Among the more common classifications, we have the inflammatory colon polyps, the hyperplastic polyps, the adenomatous polyps, and the villus adenomas. So now we're going to explore each of these a little further and discuss them in a little more detail. The inflammatory colon polyps. The inflammatory colon polyps are usually found in patients with an inflammatory bowel disease such as Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. Inflammatory polyps are sometimes called pseudopolyps, meaning false polyps, because they aren't really proper polyps but are rather an inflammatory manifestation of IBD. These polyps are usually benign and are unlikely to become cancerous. So below is just the images of what these polyps look like. And they are most commonly found in ulcerative colitis and we notice that pseudo polyp appearance on colonoscopy. It's actually one of the diagnostic criteria found in ulcerative colitis. So this is basically what it looks like, the pseudo polyp appearance. The hyperplastic polyps. Hyperplastic polyps are defined by the activity of the cells in the tissue mass. Hyperplasia, meaning fast growth or fast growing, simply means that there is an abnormal increase in the numbers of cells resulting in the gross enlargement of a polyp. Despite the rapid growth, however, hyperplastic polyps are considered to be at low risk of turning cancerous. So on my picture on the left, we have an example of the hyperplastic polyp, and this is also seen on colonoscopy. And hyperplasia means basically fast growing. So these polyps actually grow quite fast and enlarge quite a bit. But they have a very low chance of becoming malignant. So they usually aren't really that serious. So now let's talk about a polyp that is a little more aggressive in nature. And that is the adenomatous polyps. The adenomatous polyps or adenomas make up about 70% of all polyps found in the colon. While adenomas can become cancerous, the process typically takes many, many years, and that's why we can call them precursor lesions to colorectal cancer. Polyps greater than 1 cm in diameter are usually associated with a greater risk of cancer. As opposed to the hyperplastic polyps, adenomas are neoplastic. Neoplasia is a term used to describe an abnormal growth of cells that gradually lose the characteristics of normal cells. When neoplastic cells form into a mass, we can refer to them as a tumor. So this is basically the aspect of the adenomatous polyps, and these polyps are a little more aggressive because they actually have the ability to turn cancerous. But as we mentioned here, this process usually takes a very long time to unfold. So if these patients are noted with an adenomatous polyp, it has to be usually resected as soon as possible so that we can prevent the future development into colon cancer. The villus adenomas. Villus adenomas are a type of adenomatous polyp that have a greater potential of becoming cancerous. It is estimated that around 30% of villus adenomas will develop into a malignancy. 
Villous adenomas are associated more often with large adenomas and more severe degrees of dysplasia. So dysplasia basically means cells that are growing in an uncontrolled manner and are not normal, so abnormal cells that are growing uncontrollably. These adenomas occur more frequently in the rectum and the rectosigmoid region, although they may occur anywhere in the colon. They are generally sessile structures that appear as velvety cauliflower-like projections. So as you can see, these villous adenomas are a lot more aggressive and you can see this sort of velvety cauliflower-like projection. And this is what a cross-sectional image looks like under a microscope. You see these sort of villous projections and that is why it's called a villous adenoma. So now let's talk about some signs and symptoms generally of all kinds of polyps. Most patients with colonic polyps tend to be asymptomatic. In symptomatic patients, the following may be seen. We can have blood in the stool or rectal bleeding, and this is usually bright red blood, and this is called hematochesia. The patient can also experience abdominal pain, a change in the bowel habits, meaning bouts of diarrhea or bouts of constipation, and they may also experience nausea and vomiting. So, how can we diagnose colon polyps? Most polyps are found incidentally in patients between the ages of 50 and 75 during a routine colonoscopy. So usually after the age of 50, most patients are screened actively about every five to 10 years for colon cancer. And this is when most polyps are actually diagnosed during these so-called routine colonoscopies. Most people with a higher risk, such as those with a strong family history of colon cancer, may need to be tested sooner. The following tests may be carried out. So the first thing we can do is a stool test, and this is in a fecal occult blood test or a FOBT. And basically all that's done here is the stool samples are checked for signs of blood. And in my picture on the right above, we see the sample of stool taken and we can see whether there is presence of blood because usually our stool has no blood. But if there is signs of blood there, it could be many things, but it could also mean that we have a polyp there. A colonoscopy and in this test, the doctor inserts a small viewing tube all the way into the colon and looks for polyps. And this is an example down here of a colonoscopy. We could also do a flexible sigmoidoscopy. And this test is like a colonoscopy, except that the viewing tube is shorter, so the doctor can only view the last part of the colon, called the sigmoid colon. So basically, it's just around this area where the sigmoidoscopy scope can actually reach. We could also do a capsule endoscopy. And in this case, an ingestible camera-equipped capsule is swallowed by the patient. And this is another means of exploring the gastrointestinal tract and can detect colon polyps. And finally, we could do stool DNA testing. And this test detects mutant or fragmented and or methylated deoxyribonucleic acid. So basically, mutant or fragmented DNA from exfoliated colon tumor cells in the stool. So this is actually quite a helpful test indeed and can help us in the diagnosis of colon polyps. So the management of colon polyps. The first thing we can do is a polypectomy. In patients with a solitary or a few pedunculated or sessile polyps, colonoscopy removal can be performed concurrently with a search for other lesions. We can also do colonic resection and in the cases of multiple intestinal polyps associated with FAP syndrome or familial adenomatous polyposis, a colon resection remains the only feasible option. So below is a video just playing a polypectomy. And if you look at this image above, this is basically the same process depicted in this video. And of course, we could do a colectomy, which is the removal of segments of the colon, or a radical colectomy, which means the removal of the entire colon. And this can also help to prevent the development of cancer or to remove these polyps that cause many symptoms for the patients. And that brings us to the end of this video on the colonic polyps. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. I hope you found the presentation very useful and informative. If you would like to download a copy of this presentation, you can do so by clicking the link in the description. And take care and bye for now.